Tornadoes, weather whiplash, and a winter that resembled some sort of normalcy were just some of what made 2021 memorable in South Jersey when it came to the weather. However, we only have to turn to our friends in the northern part of the state to see that it could have been much worse. The press of Atlantic City's coverage area, Ocean, Atlantic, Cumberland, and Cape May counties saw five tornadoes this year. The rest of the state saw seven. The Groundhog's Day blizzard brought, well, not much snow to us, but brought a blizzard to the northern part of the state. In fact, a record-setting snowfall in some towns in New Jersey. And then there was Ida. While it didn't do much here in southeastern New Jersey, the rest of the state saw massive flooding and even tornadoes. The 30 deaths from the flooding was the most in Superstorm Sandy and one of the most in New Jersey's recorded history. Here are the top 10 most notable weather events in southeastern New Jersey in 2021. <music> We'll start off number 10 with Ida, and again, it didn't do much here in our corner of the state. However, for the rest of New Jersey, this was not only the number one weather event of this year, but could be the number one weather event of the entire decade. Here in southeastern New Jersey, we saw anywhere between a tenth of an inch to an inch of rain and some gusty winds, but again, nothing like what we saw in the rest of New Jersey. For number 9, we go to March 26th, which broke a record high temperature on a very windy day. We got up to 83 degrees at Atlantic City International Airport. But it wasn't so much the record that was impressive, but how the record was broken. The previous record high was 71 degrees. That was a 12 degree margin of defeat, our largest margin of defeat since February 5th of 1991. Number eight also stays in the month of March. At Millville and Atlantic City International Airport, we had our driest noon dew point this late in the year on March 15th, which got down to negative two in Millville and negative three at Atlantic City International Airport. More impressively was at the airport where that negative three dew point was the lowest dew point this late in the year period. Now, this was all part of a very dry street from March 2nd to March 16th. We had not a drop of rain at the airport, and on March 14th, we had a wildfire in Lakewood that spread over to Brick Township. Number seven on the list was May 22nd and 23rd, the hottest May weekend in South Jersey's recorded history. Both Atlantic City International Airport and Millville broke record highs as they reached 93 or 94 degrees, depending on the day and depending on the location at ACY and in Millville. And over towards the shore, there is no sea breeze, something very unusual in the month of May, where water temperatures are usually in the 50s and want to spread onto the islands. At Atlantic Sea Marina, we got up to 88 degrees on Saturday and 90 degrees on Sunday. That was our earliest 90 degree reading since 2000. And not only that, we could have used that throughout the summer from Memorial Day to Labor Day because my short summer weekend report card for the first time since I've done it in four years did not feature an A, and this weekend would have surely been an A for the Jersey Shore. Number six, Western and Canadian wildfires make their way into New Jersey throughout the month of July. The blue skies turned gray, and the sunrises and sunsets turned vibrant shades of oranges, reds, and pinks as this smoke made its way well above the surface for most of July. Now, keyword most. Some days in July, that smoke did trickle down to the surface, and as it did so, it prompted increased calls into Atlantic Care with people complaining of difficulty breathing. Just one week after the hottest May weekend on record, the weekend after, Memorial Day weekend, was the coldest on record throughout the unofficial Memorial Day to Labor Day summer season. In Millville, Saturday and Sunday, May 29th and 30th, was the coldest one between the summer holidays with a record coldest high Sunday of 52 degrees. At Atlantic City International Airport, the Saturday and Sunday high temperatures made it the coldest summer weekend on record. And at the coast, Sunday's high 56 degrees was the coldest high temperature at Atlantic City Marina. This all came as COVID restrictions and capacity limitations were lifted for much of the Jersey Shore. Though as somebody who spent a lot of time at the Jersey Shore Memorial Day weekend, that didn't mean to stop many people here. Even with the pounding rain, we saw between one and a half to two and a half inches of rain between Friday night to Sunday, rain and coastal flooding that engulfed the region. Number four, the Groundhog Day Nor'easter brings coastal flooding and ends the record longest snow drought at Atlantic City International Airport. 
Between January 31st and February 3rd, we saw up to five consecutive rounds of tidal flooding. We saw over two inches of rain in most of the area, including a record setting 2.01 inches of rain on February 1st at Atlantic City Marina. And at Atlantic City International Airport, we broke our record long 416 day snow drought when 1.2 inches fell throughout that storm. It wasn't much, but it was something. Now compare it to the rest of the state. Well, as you made your way over north of Route 78, over two feet of snow fell in most of that portion of the state. In fact, some places saw over 30 inches of snow with many daily and storm record snowfalls falling at some of those locations. Number three, July 9th brings Tropical Storm Elsa and another round of severe weather later in the day. The early morning hours of July 9th saw two tornadoes spawned, one in Woodmine and one in Little Lake Harbor, as Tropical Storm Elsa worked its way through the region here. It was another July direct impact from a tropical system following in the footsteps of Tropical Storm Fay just last year. Not only that, later in the day, a round of severe weather came through the area, dumping heavy rain and bringing some damage to power lines and trees, mainly along the Atlantic Sea Expressway corridor. Now, number two isn't a specific weather event, but the decadal update to the 30-year climate average by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration was big news. For the fifth decade in a row, temperatures warmed across South Jersey and the Garden State. Leading the way in our corner of the state was the month of December, which rose 1.7 degrees between the current 1991 to 2020 30 year average and the previous 1981 to 2010 30 year average. It's not just temperatures either. We also have been getting wetter here in South Jersey. We saw a precipitation increase of roughly 10%. And if you're a snow lover out there, don't fret. We've actually gotten snowier over the decadal update, going from 16.5 inches on average at Atlantic City International Airport to our new average of 17.4 inches. Number one, the July 29th tornado outbreak. The second busiest tornado season in New Jersey's recorded history saw the second biggest one day outbreak on July 29th. Six tornadoes tore through to Garden State on that July Thursday. Half of them were in Ocean County. They included an EF0 of five tornado in Jackson Township at 8.04 p.m., an EF1 of five tornado in Barnegat Township at 8.42 p.m., and the most notable one, an EF2 tornado that started at 9.03 p.m. in the eastern portion of Waretown, crossed the Barnegat Bay, and then tore through the High Bar Harbor section of Long Beach Township in Barnegat Light. The fast-moving storms left people without power, caused injuries, and damaged homes, leaving some temporarily displaced. That 4.2-mile track tornado with winds of 115 miles an hour was only the second tornado to hit LBI since the 1950s, though a tornado did cross over the Route 72 bridge just last year. Those six tornadoes were part of 13 that went through to Garden State, the second most since records started in the 1950s, only behind 1989, which also had the largest tornado outbreak during the month of November. Thank you to everyone for following along throughout the ups and downs of 2021's weather here at the Press of Atlantic City. I'm happy to be here with you every step of the way, whether it's right here on video, written articles, or on social media. We're going to look forward to better weather as we go into 2022. Hope you have a wonderful new year, and we'll talk with you soon.